All right, so today we've got a special guest, professional hockey player for the Calgary Flames, Zach Ronaldo. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, my man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming on. So let's get right into it. So when you heard the season was canceled, where were you exactly and what was your immediate reaction? Um, it was early morning and we, we were playing that day. And who were we playing? I forget who we were playing. Maybe Vegas. I could be wrong. But um, we all got like a memo from the league and uh, text messages from our organization saying the league's been, the league's been canceled. And it was like surreal. Yeah. It was it was just very, very surreal. Um, but we were all like, okay, so what do we do? Do we go to the rink? Do we still pregame skate? Is our game still happening? Like, what do we do? Um, we didn't end up going to the rink, but a bunch of us still met up for a pregame meal. Oh, nice. <laughs> we still ate our pregame meal, but then we all just went home and uh, and just kind of tried to gather as much information as we could as to what the hell is really going on. Yeah. And so that's what that's where I was, and that's what I was doing. Yeah, I bet a lot of confusion. Even as as a sports fan, I didn't know what the hell was going on either. So, and, and a lot of people still don't know what's going on. Yeah. Have you had any updates, or like, what's the latest? Are they trying to resume the season, or is it just a write off? Um, I think I think um, they're going to exercise every single option um, until there's no options left. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many options. I'm assuming they have uh, options that are um, easy options and options that are very difficult options to make the season resume. Like I said, they're going to exercise every option um, until they run out of options. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot for them to consider in terms of like sponsorships, um, TV ads, things like that. Um, so what have you been up to in the meantime to stay busy? Just spending time with family? You've been staying in shape? Um, yeah, when I was in Calgary, um, it was tough for me to work out because the, the place I was renting, no, there's no weights. It was just really body, body weight exercises I had to do. But the thing was, when I was in Calgary, I was renting a home um, from a player who plays in the AHL that lives in Calgary, though. Okay. So the AHL season got canceled. So he knew he wanted to come home to his house, rightfully so. That you know, if I was that guy, I want to go to my house too. Yeah. Um, so I had to leave Calgary because he wanted to come back to his place, and I couldn't find a place, another place to rent for, I don't know how long. Yeah. So he came home. So I had to you know, round up my family and, and head back home to Hamilton. So um, that took a lot. Like I had to pack up the whole house. I had to make sure my house back in Hamilton was ready to move into. I had to figure out how I was going to get home because I didn't want to go to the airport um, and I didn't want to drive home. So I had to bite the bullet and go private. And um, that was, that took up like a, a month, a month and a half of like, figuring out should i leave should i not leave should i rent is the season going to go on another two weeks do i stay in calgary do i go home there was so much uncertainty with uh, what was going on but i decided the best thing for me and my family was to um, go home and, and that's what we did and now we're in hamilton yeah so what have you guys been up to just spending time with each other or? yeah yeah you know it was um the first the first couple three months of the season um i didn't see my kids um or my wife. So uh, I'm really making up time for those three months that I missed with them. And even when I was back with them in December, December to like, well, December till now, um, I was, you know, on the road, in and out of the house every morning, in and out of the house, on the road for 10 days, on the road for five days. So I still wasn't, um, you know, present as much as I would have liked to be, obviously, because of my profession. Um, but now I'm saying I'm playing catch up. I'm really getting to know my kids, the ins and outs, um, you know, uh, how to maneuver in the morning with them. Cause I'm normally I'm gone in the morning. Yeah. So that's a whole different world to me. And, you know, the breakfast and the, the cartoons and stuff like that. Yeah. It's uh, I'm really playing catch up with my kids. It's, it's awesome though. I'm, uh, I'm like, uh, a, a three-year-old in a three-year-old body. right now. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome, man. So what, what do you think is the best course of action for the NHL or what would you like to see? You think the season should resume or should the team 
who's in first place right now be awarded as champions? What are your thoughts? Um, I, personal opinion, I don't think the first place team should be awarded um, the Stanley Cup. I don't. I know the players on that team, and uh, I don't think that they would be proud. Yeah. You know, as proud to say, "Hey, I'm a Stanley Cup champion," because you're really not. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and that, that's how I would feel too. If someone yeah. said, "Hey, here's your cup because you were first place, but you didn't really win it," I wouldn't really feel fulfilled on and really enjoying that Stanley Cup. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that should happen. Um, uh, I like. I would like. Obviously, I want to go back. I mean, but I want to go back. Um, I want fans. Yeah. I think number one is the fans, especially Calgary fans, because uh, it's been a long time since I, I felt uh, the love and then I felt uh, that kind of energy from a crowd, and I've really felt home when I was playing for the for for the fans. Yeah. So I need I need my Calgary fans, man. I need them there in the crowd. So. I don't really don't want to go back unless there's fans. Can yeah. you imagine winning Stanley Cup with no fans? I know. No, no, no parade or yeah. no – even when I bring it home to not have a little parade in my city or show my family and have a Stanley Cup party with my people. Yeah. You know, that's what a lot of players play for is that, that reward after you win the Cup. It's yeah. nice. That Cup is beautiful, but it's, it's the reward you, you get, that feeling you get. Um, you know, bringing that cup home and bringing that cup to the city and having that parade and, and embracing that with the fans and the people of Calgary. So yeah. I want hockey to come back, but I want it to come back um, properly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing like it. I know some of the sports leagues, they're toying with ideas of um, setting up some sort of VR system where fans can just watch at home. But I feel like it's, it's not the same as being there at a live game or even for the players, you know, just to have that atmosphere, have that energy that boosts you when your team is down, when you're trailing or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm hoping for the best. I'm a big sports fan. I'm hoping all sports come back, at least in some capacity. Um, I would hate for teams to be awarded with a championship and then have that asterisk beside it for the rest of history, you know? What and I'm that's saying? what will happen. Even yeah. like, even if there are no fans and, and, uh, and you come back and you play the playoffs and but it's like a, a chopped up playoffs, like a quick playoffs. Yeah. You don't want like you make up a lot of people, you know, poke fun at like the, the corona cup. You know what I mean? Like the, the coronavirus cup. <laughs> Who wants to really win the coronavirus cup? Yeah. <laughs> in the blocked up playoffs. But I think, you know, as long as we um we come back, I think a pay per view is is a good way to um broadcast games. Sure. You still fans will still be paying, you know, uh, for a for a ticket, you know, yeah. sixty dollars for a pay per view for a game. If you want to buy the game, and that's like buying a ticket. Yeah. Um, I get that, and and it will give people um, something to uh, look forward to, some yeah, hope sure. that there are there is light at the end of the tunnel. For and sure. I think if we have to go back to show people that there hey there is light at the end of the tunnel, like we're okay here. If we're okay, then you'll be okay eventually. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's a good uh, light that we can shine on um, for hockey, for yeah. promoting the game. Um, I think, yeah, I think anything we do moving forward is a positive to shed light on the game. Yeah. So um, I'm probably just hoping for the best, man. Yeah, same here. So what do you miss most about hockey? I miss the team. I miss my boys, like uh, the camaraderie. Yeah. We, this group especially, like brothers, man. Like it's just this the bond. I'm 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 new to the team, but I feel like I've I've known these guys for like ten years. Um, so I miss I miss that camaraderie, and I miss working hard, man. Yeah. I miss like to where I can't breathe, working hard. You know what I mean? The grind. And, that's I miss the grind. I I really really miss the grind. It's weird to say. People probably think that like, um, you know, that's probably the worst part about it. But I miss it so much. I miss the fucking yeah, working hard, bro. <laughs> it shows your passion, man. It yeah, shows your passion. I mean, I'm a yeah. former athlete. Definitely not to the same level as you, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, it's it's the the process is the best part. 
you know, all those hours you're putting in, you're sweating, training, grinding, I definitely feel you. So yeah. do you have any uh, pregame, like quirky pregame routines or rituals? Are you suspicious at all? I'm not. Oh, shit. I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, I go with how my, what my body needs that day. So if I'm feeling good, then maybe a quick little warm up. And then um, if I'm feeling like my glutes or my hips, hips need some extra attention, then I'll work those out. Or if I feel I need to get mentally more focused than I have the last game, then I'll do that. But I'm not uh, – like I said, I just go with the flow. Yeah, no, superstitious. no lucky socks or lucky boxers or nothing like that, lucky coins? No, no. no. Coffee, man. Like okay. coffee and and um, maybe some injections from the doctor. That's about <laughs> it. Nice, man. So let's, um, let's take it back a little bit. So you were drafted in 2008, sixth round. Take mm -hmm. me through that feeling. What were you thinking? Um, how are you feeling? Where were you exactly? And what was your reaction? I was in my bedroom at my parents' house on the computer. <laughs> stressing, bro. Stressing. <laughs> First round, second round, third round, fifth round, sixth round came. And I was still on the computer. And by this time, like my dad has, my dad left. I was the only one in the room. Um, <clears throat> and Philly was about to draft someone. I don't know who it was going to be. And I'm like, because Philly was my favorite team growing up. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Philly could take me. Uh, I said to myself, I said, Philly could take me. Boom. I saw my name, man. Ooh. I went, I ran up the stairs and I told my old man. And it was just a wrap. It was just a wrap from there. Like then like, the work boots came on and, and it was, uh, it was a, a killer be killed mentality that I yeah. sustained yeah. after that. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's an amazing feeling, man. Something that you've, is it something that you've dreamed your whole life of, of being a part of? Yep. I, from when I was eight years old, I was going to be in the NHL. You couldn't, you couldn't tell me differently. You, if I could have been good at football, I could have been good at all these other sports, but um, hockey was my main dream. I mean, you literally couldn't tell me different. Yeah. So as a professional athlete, I'm assuming that you hang out or at least you get to be a part of a different circle. Um, just wondering, who's the coolest celebrity that you've met being a hockey player? Oh, man, I was, I was talking about this uh, today, actually. Um, oh, who have I met, man? Um, oh, shit. That's a good question, bro. So many options. I want to try. I want a good one. You know what I mean? That I was like, "Oh, this guy's so cool," and like, I didn't think he'd be this cool, but you're, you're cool. Yeah. Um. Shit. I want to say like, hockey wise, it was probably. Um. Fuck. Aginla was cool. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to say that because like Calgary and stuff, but <laughs> one of the guys, you know, I watched him growing up, and. Uh, and then I got to play against him. And not only did I play against him, I, was, I fought him. And then we had some good wars, me and him. And I saw him one night after the game. And I said, what up? Like, you know, it was just really good vibes. Although we just played against each other and we hated each other on the ice. It was cool to see him off the ice. And, and, and we had that respect factor. Yeah. Um, That's what's up. That was a really, really cool, cool experience. Um, yeah, I saw that clip, actually. That was back in 2014. I saw you laid a big hit on him. So how'd that, yeah. how'd that progress? I'm assuming he didn't like the hit. He approached Yeah, him. he didn't like the hit. You know, like, fuck it. I'm thinking to myself, too. Like, if I hit Jerome, he's probably going to want to fight. Or at least someone's coming after me. Um, no, I, I hit him. Like, clean hit. He didn't like it. He asked me to go. I got up. And when we, you know, we fought. And that's part of the game. So exactly. Uh, that's it's na it naturally happened and that's probably the best way that it could have happened yeah so what's more satisfying for you what would you say scoring a goal or winning a fight it it all depends for me it depends on how the game's going yeah if we're like three three going in almost the end of the game and i score and we win the game then that's bigger than a fight but at the same time if we're down three nothing and I fight, and we come back and win the game 4-3 just because I fought and that momentum shifted, then I fight. So there's, I can't pick one. I can't pick the other because it's so 
uh, in different scenarios, one means more than the other. Yeah, yeah. Just depends on how it impacts the game, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But if I were to pick one, I honestly, um, I would do the harder job, which is fighting. Um, so I think if I had to pick one, if they, if they were like, Zach, you can win the game. How do you want to win the game? A fight or a goal? I would probably pick a fight. fight. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah, not, not, because, not because I like fighting. It's because no one else wants to do that. And yeah. I'm okay with doing that. So I'll be, I'll be your sacrifice. I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, I can handle my own for us to win the game. Gotcha. Did you have, do you have any siblings? Did you guys fight a lot growing up? Is that where you got the toughness from? No. Um, I got a younger sister. I obviously didn't beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I had a lot of rage inside of me yeah. and I wasn't able to release that off the ice because, you know, you fucking go to jail, you get charged and stuff like that. So there was a sport where you could literally, hit people, take your frustrations out, and use that as an escape outlet. Yeah. And boom, like yeah. from six years old, you're able to hit and be aggressive. Yeah. And like, I couldn't sit still in school for the life of me. And so like when I was done elementary school and I can go and play hockey and take some, you know, some energy out, then yeah. that, that was the recipe for me. And I kind of just um, fell into it. I feel you. Nothing better than fighting and not getting in trouble for it. Yeah, you serve five minutes or, you know, whatever. You, that's it. No one, you actually get praised for it. You might yeah. make it a living off of it. So. Yeah, true. Actually, speaking of that, I did a little bit of research and um, I saw that you have, what is it, 1,200 minutes of uh, penalty box time, which is about 20 hours or so. Do you know who has the all-time record for most penalty minutes all-time in the NHL? In the NHL, like, is Domi up there? Like, Ty Domi or, like, Domi, Rob, Domi uh, is Probert? up there. Domi, Domi's actually number three on the list. Probert up there, top three? Um, I don't remember, but number one Marty is... McSorley? No, number one is uh, Tiger Williams, and he's got uh, almost 4,000 minutes, penalty minutes. Yeah, wild. <laughs> I know. That's, I don't even know if you can serve that in the penalty box. They might just give him like the penalty minutes and kick him out of the game. You couldn't <laughs> even serve that. <laughs> just stay at home. He's at home lockdown. That's it. Yeah, you got your own box at home, man. Yeah. So is there is there anyone that uh, that you avoid fighting, or is there a fight that you've you've met that you didn't want to approach? Maybe like a Zidane O'Chara or. Yeah, I almost fought. I almost it was very close. I almost fought George Peros. Oh, wow. When George is in the league, there's actually a picture of me and George face to face, but like my face isn't in his face, obviously. But I'm looking up at him and he's staring down at me, and it's a sweet picture. But like I, I remember exactly that time, and we almost had to fight because I was running around. I was a young kid, 20, 21, 22, just running around, didn't care about what you were going to do. And I almost fought George Peros, and I think that was probably the, uh, the moment I was like, Ah, I shouldn't do this, but like I might have to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was probably the only moment in my career where I was, where I was like, ah, yeah. I don't know if I should do this, but like I need to. I might have to, and mm -hmm. I was willing to do it. Just never happened. I see. Do you feel that pressure a lot? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, more so lately, as of as opposed to like my younger years. Yeah. I'm older now and a lot ties a lot a lot of things ties in more to a game that I've realized over my career, like the time of the game, the score of the game. Are we down a player because they're hurt? Um do we even need that fight? Do we you know what I mean? A lot ties into it as opposed to when I was younger in the first couple of years in the league where I just did whatever I wanted to do because that's just how I became into the league. Yeah. But now there's more, I'm more of a professional now um, to where coaches have taught me the ins and outs of, of really um, picking and choosing my spots yeah. accordingly to make sure that we win a successful game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, as, the, as your career progresses, your mentality changes, right? A lot of growth you learn from. Yeah, that, I think that's why or how that I've survived um this this long in the league um because if i wasn't able to adapt um to winning ways and have that mindset of making conscious decisions 
uh, then I don't think I'd be in the league yeah. anymore. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've all had our ups and downs, and I know you've had your ups and downs in your NHL career. But yep. um, you've been resilient, and you've always bounced back. Just wondering, what's your biggest motivation factor to always come back? Uh, that's a good question, man. Um, I think I think we're just born with it. I don't. There's not one thing that I'm, I'm not. I'm not thinking like oh, I gotta do this for this reason, or I gotta do that for this reason. Not one single thing makes me want to keep going. I think it's just inside of me. Yeah. Um, I've been an underdog my whole career. You know, fourth round drafted the OHL, sixth round drafted to the um, NHL, and I think that hard work and that grind is addicting to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, proving people wrong is addicting. Um, and that's. I think that's probably my motivation is proving people wrong. Yeah. Um, I think that is uh, the number one motivational thing for me, which I just found out now um, is proving people wrong. Yeah. Proving people wrong and proving yourself right. I feel it. That's right. I think, yeah, it's more satisfying proving people wrong than proving myself right for me. Yeah. So that, yeah. that grind, that grit, that resilience can be transferred to, um, anything you do in life. So let's say you weren't an NHL player, what would you see yourself doing? Um, I think two different things. I think if I wasn't a, a hockey player, I would have picked another sport and become a professional in that in that sport. I don't know what sport it would have been. Whatever I sport I put my heart and soul into, I would have become a professional in, in that sport. Yeah. Um, but outside of sports, uh I don't know. It could have gone really bad, you know. It could have gone really, really down south. But I don't honestly. I couldn't even answer that question because everything I've learned in my life that I'm really into now, that I'm taking interest in now, happened because I was in hockey. Yeah. Um, like I've I've really become aware of uh, my body, and I really um, am open to how my body moves and the ins and outs of my own body yeah. and taking care of your body and injuries and, and that stuff. So I'm really uh, passionate about making sure that youth players are act- accessible to treatments and to um, give back to the youth and educate them and to make sure to take care of your body because I was a young kid at 1.2 where I was invincible. You, I could break my knee and I didn't care. I could sprain my ankle and I didn't care. I would keep going. Um, but that's not good. You can't have that mindset because, like, now I'm, in, now I'm, I'm hurting. Now I'm 30 years old because I didn't take care of my body properly when I was 20 to 25. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, that I'm, so I'm passionate about that because of hockey. Yeah. So I couldn't even answer what I could be doing. But sport-wise, if I could be a boxer, I could have been an NBA player. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what I think. That's how I, my mindset is that I could have been in the NBA if I trained as hard as I did for hockey. I would have been the NBA. Yeah. Now that's an amazing mindset to have. Yeah, I could see you run point guard for the Lakers, hitting Bro, three. Bro, I'm, I'm like an AI. I'd be like an AI. AI. Yeah. <laughs> you you know, got to get the cornrows and the chain to be. That's AI. no problem. That that comes. I could do that easy. <laughs> that, that would come. That would come. Uh, um, that's Steve Nash. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. So, um, at the end of your career, what do you want to be known for as a hockey player? What do you want the kids to to see you as, to remember you for? It's, it's hard to, to, um, to really, I can tell you what I want them to think and I can tell you what they're going to say and going to think because the media has put a different spin on me and my personality. Yeah. They're, they're going to know me as a tough guy, enforcer, fighter. Um, probably think I'm an asshole to be honest with you because of my persona on the ice what i want them to what i want the youth to take me as is a an underdog a hard worker someone who never gave up and i've been through everything and more to get to where i've been and that um to always be humble and to always just keep it real and to always be yourself 
um, yeah. as opposed to, you know, what people see on the ice and what they hear about me and my suspensions and my dirty play and stuff like that. So um, I would like them to see a humble kid who comes from a city who always goes home every single summer and gives back to his city um, and just wants to educate the youth on making sure that their mindset is you can literally be whatever you want to be as long as you work hard at it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, the, the media is always going to have their twist to things. They're going to they're gonna have their say. Um, personally, I find your story very inspiring. Um, the, the way that you have battled through everything and, you know, you've been an underdog and you don't let anything hold you back. You're always mm -hmm. pushing through, always striving to be better. So um, at the very least, you've been an inspiration to me. I appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm glad that I could uh, be uh, or be that for you, man. That's of fucking course, awesome. Of course. Um, so do you have any words for the city, city of Calgary? Any words of positivity, encouragement, uplift people's spirits during this time? Tell you right now, when I talk, when I talk in the group chat with, the, with my team, with the Flames, we want that cup so bad. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's something about this group that we might not be in first place in regular season, but come playoff time, our our mindset as a team, you can't beat us in playoffs. We want – I'm just letting you and the city of Calgary, we want that cup so bad that it's all season long. That's what we talked about. We talk about hoisting the cup. We talk about winning the cup. We talk about that parade. We talk about those things. We, we, we were manifesting that cup because we want it that bad because we love it. I think we love each other so much that – to solidify that would be the cup. Yeah. Um, so for the city of Calgary and the fans, when hockey comes back, believe me that we're going to be wanting that cup more than anybody else. All right. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to jot that down right now. Zach right. Ronaldo promises Stanley Cup. <laughs> promises? No. <laughs> promises? No. But we will work as hard as we can to fulfill that. I'm, I'm just messing with you. If I was in the media, that would be the headline. You know, I'd twist it. 